I have a big and great topic today. We could speak about it two years if we will stand here. All the final, all the details. Why is PSA rising? What can I do? I try to put it in 15 minutes and try to make it interesting for you, for all of us. This slide is one of the slides from Professor Shariat. He gave me as my teacher and master teacher in oncology since years, showing some details which I don't want to explain. What I want to say with this and the second slide, just something to introduce our problem today, which I will discuss with you. The second one is showing basically the same, the problems after I get the local therapy, surgical or radiation therapy, I have a rising PSA. What does it mean? As Sharok wrote in, in one of his talks, it's differentiation between pussycat and the tiger. It can be a pussycat, and I could have a, BS, a, a biochemical recurrence just because of the benign, benign prostatic cells, which will also show some PSA rising afterward, but there are not there's no need to treat them. And it can be a tiger with very few cells, but very aggressive, which can kill the patients if we make a wrong decision regarding the therapy after PSA is rising, after the local, local therapy. And this, this is a picture I know from my patient. Doesn't matter what you say as a urologist, if PSA start to rise after the local therapy, which is supposed to be curative, patients are stressed. In German, we say PSA is patienten stress activator. That means in English something like patient stress activator. I think we could say it in every language. Doesn't matter what the surgeons say, PSA should not rise if you want to have a happy patient after the local therapy. What does it really mean if PSA is rising after the local therapy? I believe, and after the talk with my patients, almost all of them think my disease is getting worse. Or there is a X time the amount of disease compared with, compared with previously. That means I'm getting worse. If I compare my PSA rising with the amount of the potentially tumor cells I have, if it rises, that means my, my disease is getting worse. I'm dying. I must be treated immediately with some else matter. That it should be changed something to stop that progress of the PSA. This, my, my disease is active. These are all the thoughts from the patients if you face them with the rising PSA after the local therapy. Some flavors I, I wrote here is a PSA fails to fall to undetectable, that means we have a persistent disease. Or undetectable PSA first, then detectable, it's a recurrent disease. Or persistent but low PSA, I already mentioned, could, could mean that we have some benign prostate, prostate cells which can also produce PSA, no PSA without prostate, that's clear. But it can be a benign prostate, that means without a cancer after the surgery or after radiation therapy, which also produce PSA. That's why this stress maybe, it's not really realistic. That's why in the next, in the few next slides, I will try to tell you who are the ideal patients which should be treated and maybe some patient which should not be treated and which patient should I, should I organize in the follow-up on which way to be sure and to give the patients the feeling of safety. Patients who fail primary therapy with surgery, radiation therapy or both. That means we have a patient, the tumor is active, that means we already had a metastatic disease in a surgery or we have a local problem because we left some tumor cells there or radiation therapy didn't work as we would like to, to have it. Only indication of disease relapse is PSA. What does it mean? Should I really concentrate my follow-up only on PSA, which can rise, stay stable, or maybe go down? Or should I take some imaging? The most data we have are CT, normal CT, and the, and the bone scan. Everything else, I will show some new data, are small groups of patients and the data are still, follow-up data at least, are still not long enough to say, okay, we should switch to maybe to other forms of imaging and according to that to change our therapy or view of those patients afterward. Is it hormonal therapy really acceptable to younger men just according to side effects? Or should we force intermediate or intermittent uh, um, hormone blockade. That's something what we know, but also not that good to say, yes, this is the way we should go to, to slow down the, the side effects, which are not that minor. Patients effort focused on diet, low fat and supplements, and 
The question of the chemotherapy also should be discussed. How to identify those who need treatment? That means a patient with a rising PSA after local treatment where I will make a decision to treat him with any, any way of the, of the possible therapies I have, but just a decision. Yes, this guy needs a treatment. Do we have to treat? Yes, we do. We know that the patients with doubling time, PSA doubling time, under 10 months are under risk to die of that cancer. Time to post-surgical PSA relapse under two or three years is also a negative predictor. And Gleason score, eight to 10. That means the tiger, that very aggressive tumor I already mentioned. Reality. We separate the patients still in the patients with a, when we think that they have just according to PSA, PSA kinetic after the local treatment to the patients where we believe there is a local problem, local recurrence or some metastatic disease, lymph nodes or bone and lymph nodes or only one of those or even a visceral metastasis. If you have the patients like that, we should also consider therapy which is effective. And what I believe and what Professor Shariat believes, and as I already mentioned, I learned oncology from him, is that the positive lymph nodes could bring some benefit to a patient if they're removed. Why should I leave a cancer cell if they are somewhere where I can reach it? Quite simple. I will show you the data, what does it mean, simple. And is it to believe if I take out the cancer cells, which are not locally in the prostate fossa, but maybe in the lymph nodes, I'm talking about the lymph nodes in this moment, is it, will it cure or will it help to the patients? Will it prolong the interval when the patient is PSA stable or maybe he will fall with the PSA? I will try to give you the answer to all this. My opinions mean Sharak opinions. What I know, I know from him and it's his slide. But I will use it because I believe the same. Determine histologic phenotype and the post-treatment PSA. Very important because the therapies are changing and if we know the phenotype, maybe we can also switch to some immune therapy. We know a lot, mo a lot of more about the tumor. It can be really useful in, in the decision making of, of the following therapy options. Establish baseline imaging and how often patient may need to be. It's also very important because if the patient comes and doesn't count with a new imaging and you say you need an imaging, it's also stress. If you define that in, in the beginning and you say you need an imaging every three months, every seven weeks, every six months, doesn't matter. It's much more contro psychologically controlled situation for the doctor and for the patient. Not to switch, not to switch that often. Use salvage local therapy as often as you can. That means it's not a standard, we know that, but if you can use it, if you put on the, put on the scale, what are the benefits, what are the possible, possible risks, and you see the benefits are going up, you should also have the courage to treat the patient locally, also in the salvage concept. No data to support chemo. Always consider investigational trials. That means if some patient fits to a trial you, already, you have access to, doesn't matter, in your hospital or some other one, you have to put the patients in the trials because that can also improve survival in some of those patients. Can use uh, ADT intermediately. Uh, as I said, this topic is too long. I would need really one year. If I go to the detail now with ADT, it would take much more than 15 minutes. But yes, we should try to lower our side effects and we know that there are significant side effects in the quality of life if we use hormone ablation. A positive PET CT predicts patient survival. Those data are from choline PET. This is the first PET which were used in a prostate cancer. The data from Choacini showing showing a benefit or not a benefit, showing that the patients with a positive PET CT, coline PET CT, are doing worse. That means if we can identify the patient with a positive nodes after the local therapy, those patients have significantly worse survival than the patients without a positive lymph node. But the things were getting more complicated because just don't forget, I'm talking about the PET coline, which was good at the moment when it came out, but the sensitivity is comparing to PSMA, what we can do to nowadays, much, much worse. 
These are the patients showing, showing I, will just, I will just show you a few, few of those, those, those uh, findings in a PET coli and CT after, after a local therapy. A positive PET CT correlately predicts the presence of recurrent nodal disease in the majority of patients with BCR after radical prostatectomy, but it might under, underestimate the extent of nodal, nodal recurrence. That means at that moment already, we knew that the underestimation could be a problem. It is not 100%. Now we know it's not even a 50, but at that moment we were not sure. The role of salvage lymph node dissection in recurring prostate cancer. What does it mean, salvage? I tried to take a look in the Google Schooler. What does it mean, salvage? Salvage means take out, take out the garbage. It, it, is, it, is really, it is really a hard meaning of the word salvage. What does it mean for a surgeon? It means a hard operation. It means operation in a patient who already had radiation therapy, surgery, possibly also hormone ablation. That means that is not the same lymphadenectomy as the first one when you did a prostatectomy. But still, is there a rational to do it? Are there data which are representative? Who is the best candidate? Even if we say yes, how to identify the patient who will really have a benefit of that kind of the operation? Toxicity of the procedure, I will show you. Which should be the extent of treatment and is it needed? This is a Syria of Rigatti who did it 211 according to the data of PET coli CT I showed you. He made his templates which lymph nodes should be, should be taken and showed that 56, almost 57% of the patients achieved a PSA of 0 0.2 40 days after salvage lymphadenectomy. That means the PSA was dropping. You could think it is good. Here, really two very important things, especially in this auditorium, there are a lot of patients standing here or listening. We have, we have some predictors which can show us the possible benefit of the salvage lymphadenectomy, but some of them are pre-OR and some of them we can identify just with the results after the OR. That means you cannot tell to the patients, look, we will take into consideration those three because we will know what, it coming, what is coming out after the surgery, not in front. Nevertheless, pre-salvage, the benefit the patients who could really have a benefit in a, pro, in a free, progression free survival are the patients with PSA lower than four, only positive in pelvis, no distant metastasis, and Gleason scores seven or less. What we know after we take out the specimens after the surgery is that the patients which, which, which respond with a complete PSA response, that means PSA goes down and stays stable down, they will have a benefit, but we know it just after the surgery. Two or less positive lymph, lymph nodes in all the specimens we take out and only pelvis like we said in the first one, if there are no distant positive lymph nodes, that's a positive predictor. I already talked about PSMA. Now I show you some data. Not a lot, but just, just to understand what, I'm, what I mean with that. 43.8% of the patients we can identify with the metastasis even with the negative coline. That means that patient, patient goes to coline PET CT, it says no lymph nodes, everything's good. Almost the half of that patient could be identified as a positive lymph node in a PSMA. Sensitivity much higher. According to that, we did our series, Professor Shariat started a prospective trial with salvage lymphadenectomy combined with PSMA CT. I'm just showing few tables because this is unpublished data, but I'm showing just few tables to, 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 to give you some ideas to understand maybe a little bit better what do we mean with that? Why are we I, I, will not, I don't want to say we, I believe that is a good stuff for a patient. And you can see it here, in this part of the table. We find almost all the lymph nodes, almost all the lymph nodes, which are shown in the PSMA pet. That means if we know where to search, we will find about 90% of the nodes. Sometimes we have nodes we, 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 we cannot find, but most of the positive nodes shown in the imaging will be fine during the war. But the real benefit is this. It's an, an unusual template. It's really a big thing to go to Aorta, to go to Cava and to take the lymph nodes out, out in, in, in the neighborhood of such big vessels. We do that. And even in the negative patients in the imaging, as you can see here, peri-aortic, nothing in the PSMA, we found 
four positive lymph nodes. Similar in pre caval one was positive in the imaging, we found five. Uh, this is a series of 58 patients. Another table, I will just make it short, I just want to show you what are the patients we included, these are the patients with, with high risk disease, from PD2 to PD4, with higher Gleason score, with positive margins, patients like that. The second stuff I really want to show, but in the next slide you will see it in the detail, are the, if, if as a patient I would ask myself, how dangerous is it? And you can see it here, we needed about 20, about three hours to operate those patients, three and a half, like 214 to 15 minutes median. Length of hospital stay after OR is seven days. It's similar to radical prostatectomy, or, this, or same in most, in most hospitals, radical prostatectomy stays for seven days. Complication post OR, we have 36%. And I will show you now what I mean with that. This is a, a more or less the moment we, we have now, it's, it's a follow-up after one year in, by, by most, most of those patients. And what I want to show you is after 15 months, oh pardon, excuse me, after 15 months, we have PSA zero in 66% of the patients. Two-thirds of the patients has PSA zero after one year. I still believe that we help to those patients. I don't know it really. I cannot prove it in a moment. I just can show you those data. But I believe if you have a PSA of zero, that you don't have a tissue which can produce PSA. That's one plus one. That's what I believe. All the other stuff I already showed you, uh, maybe also very interesting, interesting uh, stuff are the complications you saw, but PSA response. Not everybody is at zero, but close to 90% went down with a PSA, that means not coming, not coming to zero, but coming to 0 0.5, 0 0.7. That means 90% of the patient has some benefit in PSA. What well, doesn't mean that they have a benefit in survival, but I hope that we will also be able to prove that. What is about toxicity? This, those 36% of complications I mentioned, this is it. Every surgeon and every patient which has a lymph, uh, lymphadenectomy knows what a lymphocele is, what lymphorrhea is, what does it mean to get the drainage in, in that area. And that's exactly what I'm talking about when I talk about lymphadenectomy in a salvage setting. Additionally, we have a little bit more of the venous thrombosis because we are moving a lot of tissue around the big vessels, but all of the patients are are on a heparin and we can mostly control the situation. But nevertheless, these are the toxicities of salvage lymphadenectomy. Last but not least, where's the role of radiation therapy in a patient's in salvage setting with PSA, PSA uh, recidiva, that means with biochemical recurrence. I took some slides from Professor Goldner, or Beth, he, he gave me some, and I pick up one case. It's just one case, he, he still didn't, he, he doesn't have a complete data set like we do because he's starting with the same stuff using PSMA, PSMA uh, scan, PET-CT, and trying to give a radiation therapy in state of lymph, lymph node dissection. But as I said, this is just one, one patient. It's very interesting. Radical prostatectomy and lymph node dissection in August of 2006. Patient was 56 years old at the, at the time of the diagnosis of prostate cancer. Initial PSA was 11, 11.7, and dropped to 0.1 after OR, negative margins. Patient had an extern irradiation with 66 gray on a prostatic fossa and 50 gray on the pelvic lymph nodes. And then PSA, three months, 0 0.1, 0 .0, 0 0.02, 0 0.05, but after 36 months, 0 0.16, 0 0.75. What happens? The patient has a metastasis in the lung. Left lung lower, one and a half centimeters reuptake of the PSMA. What did Gregor, Gregor did is a stereotactic irradiation of that lesion with three times 10 gray. That was a 65% of the isodose. And look here. PSA 50 months after 1.8, that was the beginning of the stereotactic radiation of that lung metastasis, dropped to 0 0.2 and 0 0.16 after a few months. Now, 
the last staging with the PSMA showed no uptake in the left lung. Also interesting, also interesting for us because we would deal with the lymph nodes but not with the lung metastasis and the combination in a salvage setting, very, very important. I discussed that with Professor Shariat also. He's also not sure, maybe some of the patients with the lymph node dissection which are not dropping to zero could have some benefit if we do radiation. But we don't know, we are trying and putting all that in the trials. And that's what I think is our job to help to the patients at the moment when nobody else could do that. Last slide. I have one beautiful sentence from Professor Tombal, which says that clinical science should be based on a strong opinion, based on strong data, and not on a strong opinion based on the weak data. And showing a trial from Ghent, PSA relapse, that means the patients we are talking about now. I had my therapy, but my PSA is rising afterward. I could try to detect the metastasis. The patients with polymetastasis means with a lot of metastasis in the bones, in the lymph nodes, in the lung, go to androgen deprivation therapy. But the other group with less metastasis, with oligometastatic disease, will be randomized to a patient with radiotherapy or surgery, that's what I'm talking about today, and active clinical survival. And this will give us an answer if we are too aggressive or we made some effort if we, if we compare it to a group which didn't have a therapy, just in a, in, a, in, a, in a view or in a point or compared to a progression-free survival or cancer-free survival. Thank you. Thank you very much.